Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing awesome. Today, we're going to do something a little fun and we're going to connect to the internet. How is that fun? What do you mean, connect to the internet? I can load up a browser today. I can go ahead and load up my email client. I can walk around with my laptop wirelessly and I'm on the internet. We're going to connect today in 2023 the way we used to connect in the 90s via dial-up. That's right, the dial-up modem. Yes, the service still exists today. I'm actually signed up with a free service that will allow me to connect to the internet and load up a web browser and work away. Now, this computer, of course, is way too old to load up any sort of modern uh, web browsers or email clients or even chat clients. Uh, however, there's a, there's a bunch of retro enthusiasts out there that have created uh, certain areas of the internet that you can go on to with a dial-up modem that will help you relive the past and what the websites would have looked like back in the day. So we're going to show you that today. Now, before I get into this, I want to talk about the modems themselves. Now, modems came in a couple different form factors. We had our internal um, form factor, which was an expansion card that went inside your computer uh, that had the ability uh, to plug in your phone line to connect to the internet and another line to your actual home phone, and we had the external variety, which had the technology built right into this enclosure. A serial cable would connect from the back of the modem to the computer, and then similarly your phone line to your telephone service, and of course if you had a home phone in the room uh, to connect it through there. Now, it was an exciting time connecting to the internet back then. Back, you were, had all different types of speeds, all different types of modems, manufacturers, technologies, Internet service providers were popping up everywhere. AOL, Simpatico, they want you to connect. They make it easy. You pop your disk in the drive, you install the software, automatically does everything for you. You don't have to think about it. They'll even give you a bunch of free hours to get you hooked. <laughs> that was the internet of the 90s. It seemed that every time we turned around, there was a new modem, a new technology, a new standard to connect to the dial-up at the time. And... It was just a really fast race at the time. I remember it quite well growing up. And so today, uh, we're actually going to utilize the US Robotics uh, 56K external uh, Sportster voice modem. Now, this particular modem was one that we had in our family uh, growing up. And this modem not only did just connect to the internet, it was also a fax modem. You could send and receive faxes at the time. Yes, faxes. They still do exist today. Uh, just not as commonplace. And this particular one also had a, a speakerphone and a personal voicemail. So I could actually make the computer an actual voicemail system. Everything they were doing back then were trying to create the telephony of the time. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and experience that wonderful dial-up sound connecting to the internet in 2023. So I'm going to go ahead and double-click my dial-up connection. I'm going to go ahead and enter my password here, and we're going to click on connect. Oh, that sound, the sound of the 90s. And so what the modem is doing right now, it's connecting to the internet service provider's modem and they're talking to each other to try to establish a protocol to connect and at what speed to connect at. So it's gone ahead and connected to the internet and I'm currently connected at 50.666 uh, speed at the moment. Now this is a 56K modem. However, even though it was 56K, technology standards um, and FCC regulations do not allow uh, any any higher speeds uh, than 53k uh, was I believe was the limit on the on the phone lines even though theoretical speeds could and the hardware could support 56k so we're connected um, I'm gonna go ahead and load up the browser one of the browsers at the time now there was Internet Explorer which we know is Edge today and Internet Explorer just phased out a few years ago um, and uh, we also had Netscape Netscape was a uh, unfortunately uh, something that had passed on. Uh, however, it does work on uh, this computer, no problem. So go ahead and load it up here. 
And we're going to load up that website that I was talking about earlier, which is theoldnet.com. Now, you can go to this on your existing computer today. Uh, you can actually go to www.theoldnet.com, which allows you to go and browse websites of the past. So you can actually go in and type a website that you would remember and select the year from 1994 all the way to 2010 that, you, that the website would have looked like at the time. And I'm just going to have some fun here. We're going to go ahead and load up a website. So I just thought about maybe going to maybe Google. What did Google look like in 1996? So I'm going to go google.com and hit enter. And I'm going to wait for it to load. And this is what you did back then. You connected the internet and you would wait as pages loaded. So back then, Google was just in the middle of being created. The, the beautiful search engine that we know today was literally in 1996 being created. So I'm going to click on the Google search engine prototype just to see what it looked like back then. There we go. That's awesome. Okay. So we're going to go back to, um, we're going to go back to the uh, oldnet.com here and we're going to go to a different site. Uh, one of the other search engines I used to like to go to was yahoo.com. Let's see what that looked like back then. It's gone ahead and contacting the oldnet.com right now. And so what this interface does, this website is goes into the internet archive, which is a, uh, another, um, a site that's available that you can go in and review all old websites, old software. It's a community that gets together and, and brings up all this information. Now, um, if you want to go visit that website it is at www.archive.org. Okay, it doesn't seem to be loading there. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and type another uh, site in here. Um, what about uh, winzip.com? Just going ahead and letting it load up. Well, there we go. Wow, the websites of yesteryear. <laughs> and this is what the experience was like. You can see the images loading, the internet, the modem is connected to the other modem. It's sending and receiving data back and forth. It's connecting, you're excited, you're waiting for it to load before you make your next move. Okay, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and do another site, and then we can, uh, I'm going to go to this modem's manufacturer's website, usr.com. Remember, these are sites from 1996. And they work today through this interface. Now, mind you, those, some of these websites don't exist today. And uh, actually, most of them don't, uh, especially not in their existing form, uh, this format. And so you actually, this what the site does is it brings up the old cached uh, sites from the time and allows it to load in an old browser via the dial-up connection. And there we go. It's loaded up. So this is the manufacturer of this modem, their website at the time, talking about what they sold and the technology and why wait for X2 technology, which was the 56K standard, which uh, was just so awesome at the time. And, and so we're experiencing it here in 2023, <laughs> dialing up to the internet. So I'm going to leave the video at this today. I just wanted everyone to give a glimpse of uh, dialing up the internet in 2023. I hope you liked the video. And if you have, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you, um, Please like the channel and subscribe. Uh, really appreciate it. Click the little bell for notifications. You get notified when I create new content. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining us today. And I hope you have a great day and look forward to see you in the next video. Have a great night. Bye-bye.